On today's show, one of the youngest mayors in New Jersey is fighting a pipeline through Raritan Bay. Also, ageism in New Jersey and why the state has a loophole in its law against age discrimination. And New Jersey has an official state microbe. We'll tell you why that's more important than you might think. Welcome to Jersey Matters, I'm Larry Menti. We begin today with breaking news. New Jerseyans are happy. It is a stunning revelation, I know, but we have statistics to back it up. Ashley Koning is the director of the Eagleton Polling Institute of Politics at Rutgers University. Thank you so much. Thanks, Larry. Who knew? Uh, I should have asked him why. You know, it's, it's with all the issues on the table, everything that's going on nowadays, it really would have been fascinating to find out why are New Jerseyans happy, but they are. 81% say they're either very or pretty happy about the way things are in their life right now. New Jerseyans are infamously unhappy. As a matter of fact, when I talked about your poll to some people, they immediately said, oh, that's not true. Yeah, you know, anecdotally, I think there's so much to worry about. There's, there's taxes, there's politics, where, you know, we have traffic and congestion. But I think at the end of the day, New Jerseyans say they're, they're pretty okay with their lifestyle. Of course, that's going to differ by various demographics. We see that some are happier than others in New Jersey. Uh, you know, we always say money can't buy happiness, but those with higher levels of education, those with higher levels of income, they're definitely happier people in the state. I, I guess I'm so stunned, as many New Jerseyans would be, at the results of your poll. Did you define happiness? No, so it's kind of up to interpretation, right? And that's what surveys are about a lot of the times, where sometimes we'll provide a definition, sometimes we won't. This is all about people's perceptions and their own sense of happiness. 81%. Yeah, yeah. Well, about one in five, 21% say they're very happy. The rest say that they're pretty happy. But, you know, somewhere in that some level of happiness, we see eight in 10 New Jerseyans say that they're doing okay. Since the last time we've talked, you, you've polled a number of topics. One of the ones that stunned me almost as much as the happy poll was uh, the rate of autism in the state. Yeah, so actually eight in 10 New Jerseyans say they know somebody with autism. Again, this could be a, a family member, a friend, a child, whether inside or outside of their family, especially prevalent among those who know a child outside of their family with autism. But the thing is, New Jerseyans really don't come into contact as frequently with individuals who have autism. So even though they may know somebody, they're not really having day-to-day -day or even weekly communications with somebody with Doesn't autism. Doesn't that seem like statistics in conflict with each other? A little bit, but again, you know, we, we have these pockets who, uh, you know, anyone can say, oh, well, I know somebody who has autism, or my child goes to school with somebody who has autism. So if they tangentially know somebody, that's the eight in 10 who say they know, but they're not coming across them on a regular basis. And they also aren't really sure what the, what the disorder is about and what autism spectrum disorder comes from. We asked whether or not they've heard it as a brain disorder, a mental illness, a behavioral problem, or a nervous system disorder, which is uh, kind of a, a new and emerging research right now that it's actually connected to the nervous system. Well, let's keep, let's keep moving on, down topic to sure. topic, sure. when it comes to gun violence. Yeah. You polled if people were fearful of gun violence or if they've experienced gun violence. Right, so, and of course, we see huge demographic disparities here. New Jerseyans overall say that they're not as concerned about gun violence happening uh, within their area, but they are concerned about their family member or a friend becoming a victim of gun violence in the future. The ones who have seen gun violence, though, the most, the ones who are most concerned about it in their communities in their area, black residents, urban residents, low income and low socioeconomic status residents. Um, huge demographic disparities. Tell me the difference the between parts. the two. I mean, how, how much higher is it in some of the urban communities? Most likely by double digits and looking at a difference of talking about under half of respondents versus over half of respondents. If we're talking about white versus non-white residents or if we're talking about urban region residents versus, you know, the suburbs or exurban counties. There are, there are many times that poll numbers should be a wake up call. And I yeah. know that you are called to testify uh, in front of the legislature about the, your poll numbers. The autism one is certainly one of those. But this one, when you talk about children in the, in the inner cities who don't expect to live to a certain age, that have experienced gun violence, that have seen somebody dead, yeah. that should be a wake-up call. The differences are really stark. And we also asked specifically about gun safety in schools. And, um, you know, about 6 in 10 or so parents have actually talked to their children about gun safety in schools, and there's wide support for having armed guards, 
not as wide support for having, uh, and, and in fact, very little support for um, arming teachers and school officials themselves. On the national scene, especially in the Democratic primary, climate change has come to the top of the list when it comes to issues. Yeah. You've polled it in New Jersey. Mm -hmm. Is it at the top of the list with New Jerseyans? Somewhat. You know, New Jerseyans are concerned. They know somewhat about it, its causes, its future effects. They don't really know how to prepare for it. And most of all, they don't want to pay for it. They don't want to pay for um, making, uh, you know, storm-resistant buildings. They don't want um, companies to have imposed limits from the government. They would rather have incentives. So with climate change, it's kind of a mixed bag. New Jerseyans know it exists, but they also don't want anything coming out of their own pockets to solve it. So the Green New Deal that's being pushed by almost every Democratic candidate yeah. right now that would be very costly, that may not play well in New Jersey? Especially not in New Jersey, given, you know, we're, we're tired and we're sick of taxes. And the number one issue is New Jerseyans want to see lower cost of living, lower, uh, lower tax situations. And, and we see that in our polling, right? Eight in 10 are dissatisfied with how taxes are handled in the state. High numbers are, are dissatisfied with cost of living and affordability. So any more money coming out of the pocket, New Jerseyans just don't want it. One, one thing that was fascinating to me, it was a poll you took a while ago, uh, several months ago, is the recognizability rate yeah. for politicians in the state yeah. was, was surprisingly low, yeah. especially when it came to Senate President Steve Sweeney, who's been in the news almost every day, yeah. who's been around for a long time, who was tied with Chris Christie, mm -hmm. and most people didn't know who he was. You know, a large percentage don't know who uh, Sweeney is, but this is not anything new. This has been for a long time now, even despite the media coverage. In fact, almost one in five don't know who the governor is or don't really express an opinion on the governor, rather. Um, you know, uh, Murphy has, you know, decent favorability ratings, decent approval ratings, just over half approve of the job he's doing. But there's still a substantial part of the population that just don't express an opinion, which is kind of rare for a governor in New Jersey, especially coming off of the Christie years. To tie this all together, you've done all these polls over the last yeah. few months since we last saw you. Is there a common theme? I, I think uh, demographic differences and looking at the state as not one monolith. You know, I think New Jersey has so many different disparities, and just like we see nationally, looking at socioeconomic status, looking at race and ethnicity, there are some really clear differences here where what we see at, on New Jersey as a whole is not necessarily reflected in every subgroup within New Jersey. So definitely some stark differences. And I guess we should know that instinctively, yeah. but we sometimes forget it that the problems of somebody in Alpine are not the problems of somebody in Camden. Right, but really we're one of the most diverse states in the country. So I think, you know, this is nothing new and I think the numbers bear that out. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Thanks, Larry. I appreciate you coming in. Ashley Koning, director of the Eagleton Polling Institute of Politics at Rutgers University. Jersey Matters is coming back right after this. Still to come on Jersey Matters, meet one of the youngest mayors in the state of New Jersey. That's when we come right back.